Would you guys believe that police ambushes are up 300% this year? What? That's insane. 300% 2022 up from last year. I'm so glad I'm retired. Absolutely. Hey, welcome back, survivors. So today we're going to talk about a very sad and unfortunate thing that's going on this year and this month specifically. I don't know why October is so bad, but we've had a lot of officers being ambushed and killed, and a lot of them happen to be during domestic violence. So we're going to kind of interject domestic violence and officer involved ambushes. So I'm glad you guys are back. Um, we're going to have a great show. Um, it's going to be bad in a, uh, in a in a dangerous situation we're gonna just it's gonna be ugly let's go with that um, we're gonna talk about officer deaths it's gonna be sad so um, fallen officers fallen officers this yeah. year we've had hundred ninety killed in the line of duty that's not shot that's just killed either in car crashes or in shootings uh, so that's just this year now which is up by well, numerous percent over this time last year it is um, gunfire this year is up 14 percent from, from last year now i want to talk a little bit about some um at the, at the beginning i talked about <laughs> i talked about uh domestic violence being just on, on the increase and in, in being dangerous for officers and sometimes i mention uh canines and yeah. how helpful these canines are so i'm going to talk about a fallen they save canine. hundreds of lives police officers lives a year absolutely hundreds. so um on august 3rd Max, a Belgian Malinois, seven years old, they were responding to a domestic violence situation. Um, husband was choking out the wife, and they got there, and there was shots fired, and they were just, it just, it, you know, the fecal matter hit the oscillator right. pretty quick. Right. They uh, they sent in the officer. Hit the fan. Yes, thank you. Thank okay. you for the uh, translation. Translation. <laughs> I say that to my students, and they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they sent in Max. And he teaches kindergarten. <laughs> what, so is it too early? Is it? Is it? It's never too early to talk about shit hitting a fan, right? They save it. They send in Max, who, you know, obviously everybody knows it's a dog, but it's also this officer's partner. I mean, you live with the dog. You take care of the dog. It's it's basically a family dog. Not all agencies do that. A lot of agencies kennel them. They put them away. You know, when they're off duty, they're at a kennel at the PD or wherever. They don't come home with the officer. What's the percentage of that? You think I do not know the percentage, percentage though. Because I would say small. Because every agency I ever knew or ever had any dealings with in Florida, the officers all took them home. But your major metropolitan cities, a lot of them anyway take them to a kennel that's where they're taken and they care have, of and everything they pick them up when they go in service they go right to the kennel pick them up you know play with i wonder whatever, i wonder how car. that affects that bonding between the handler because i know there's a huge bonding well it between... doesn't really affect it too much because and and even when they're at home and and because i i commanded the canine unit for for a period of time the dogs themselves are usually at home even when they're treated like a family dog when that officer starts strapping on the leather and putting all this stuff on and everything else you can see an entire change in the dog's demeanor time to go to work it's like oh my god it's time to play time to play time to go to work for those of you that have time to bite some ass and when you pull that leash out and the dog goes ape shit because it's time to go for a walk well these dogs do that and they go ape shit because the only time they really get to play is when it's work time right, when, right. when they're going to go in the car and they're yeah. going to go out and then and then it's time to play right so go ahead i'm sorry so no that's fine um so th the officers get there and this uh dirt bag runs off into the woods and he's not complying they send max in after him and max is eating some ass and the guy pulls out a gun and kills max oh, um man. but that afforded the officers to end up shooting him and it saved lives of the because that guy would not have hesitated to kill an officer yeah he would have right. ambushed them so that instead of the dog so yeah. max um gave his life for fellow officers so here's the max max salute to max yep. and all yep. the canines yep. out there that have given the ultimate sacrifice and you know the handler was devastated i'm sure oh, absolutely. oh my god yeah. i mean how but have you ever watched a 
the canine funeral. funeral. Yeah, oh my it's, god, oh it's, my it god. gives you chill. It's it's just, right, but you know, I mean, unfortunately, you know, that's that's part of what you know, I mean. We we employ the dog, and hopefully, the dog will save a human. Yeah, it yeah. It, it, it if. It, if you take the emotion out of it, right. the dog is a tool. So before we get into the meat and gravy of the show, <laughs> let's say. Gravy. <laughs> okay. The alpo of the show. Wow. Before oh, we get into all that, <laughs> why don't we do a beer moment? Let's do a beer there moment. You know. and, uh, let's do let's one, dedicate one to Max here. Absolutely. Oh, we'll have a little something. A little something. Love it. A little something. And that's what it says, guys. Little, little something. Something. S U M P I N. Something ale. I love it. Lagonitis. I have no wait, idea. Wait, we got to have the. Yeah, there you go. Got to have. Hey, guys, if, if oh, John yeah. is brutalizing the name of this brewery, please, please let us know. Because we would love to be able to hold it over, John. And, and so, by the way, guys, hopefully y'all have noticed we got some new mics and we have some new stands. So the microphones are up here right at our um, face. pie so holes. Our, our pie so you hole can't level. see my beautiful face. Our cake Thank eaters, God. our pie holes. That's so why hopefully I, the sound has drastically improved. We did a lot of tests on this and everything else. And I'll tell you what, but our tests were so much freaking better once yeah. we got them up here right by our right. faces. Let, I, let us know I, I, how you think it sounds. Let us know how we can yeah. help. Yep. It's got a nice golden color. Oh, my God. It's Jamie, clear. Jamie, I'm <laughs> counting on you. You're our <laughs> biggest know. commenter. I'm counting on you to let us know how this sounds. We've had some really good <laughs> comments lately, so keep it up. Yeah, we love it. Thank you, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe down below, please. It's a, it's a little... You know, Mine, the first bite was not that great, but I'm, I'm liking it. Mine has it. a little head on it. Hey! And why is that? I don't know. Because everybody likes a little head. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. A little head. <laughs> we get a lot more than you do. Oh, oh wow. All right, I'll start us off. I'm going to go with a five and a half. I like the other last week's beer a little better, but this is, has a really nice, it has a, a good flavor. Let's go with that. Go ahead, John. <laughs> five and a half. <laughs> I'm going to give it a, a 5.7. It lacks a crispness. You know, and I'm a lager drinker by trade. <laughs> <laughs> yes, did, you are. Did, did, yes, you are. There John, you go. John, okay. did, did you bite me? No. Then it must be this beer. Woo, it's got a bite. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, it's got a bite. Yeah, it's not the worst I've ever had, but it's hoppy as hell. So I am going, and I am not a hoppy beer kind of guy, so I'm going to give this a five. So, yeah, okay, yeah. whatever. It's about average. Right. Yeah. yeah, about average. All right. All right, go ahead, brother. All right, so um, we, we talked about uh, ambushes and domestic. So um, I read a report today from the um, National Fraternity Order of Police. They, they, were, they record officer and shootings. So I mostly get line of duty deaths from the officer down memorial page right. Right. um the fraternal order police and some other uh, websites track shots and then there's a website that tracks officer suicides right fop um had put out a report as of the end of september there were 252 officers shot in 2022 50 of them were killed by gunfire 63 ambushes Holy shit. That's 63 got, ambushes. And I know you didn't have time to go back and see how many ambushes over the previous years. Right. No. But if if it increased by three, I mean, somebody somebody do the math. How many was were there in 2021 if it increased 300% to 63 um, this well, year? Well, 100% would be double. 50, uh, so 30. Yeah. So three hundred percent. Yeah, good I mean, it's God. Just very yeah. So holy yeah. cow! It's 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 crazy. Um, of these sixty three ambushes, this resulted in ninety three officers being shot, twenty four being killed. Now that I, this wow. report did not include this week, which was a very very bad week for officers. Which is what we're doing the show on, right? Right. 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 Yeah. Since Monday, we've had twelve police officers shot in the United States since Monday, and it's Friday. And at least right. one of the two of those, no, three, but one, but and you're going to talk about them. Mm -hmm. um, Five officers have been killed. Were ambushed. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, five officers Bristol, have been. Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah. Five officers were were killed by gunfire, and one died in a crash. And these those were all responding or results of domestic violence. So, and and I I find that. A lot, and and I, if I were to dig, and or anybody were to dig into a lot of these ambushes, I would imagine, I could imagine that the majority of them were domestic related. Yes, I worked. Well, at, I worked like at, the the one in Bristol. Yes, that wasn't. It was called in as a domestic. Right. So tell call. us about the Bristol case, John. Well, that was two drunk brothers, right, who just decided, hey, it'd be a good idea to call the cops and tell them we're fighting. Right. Bristol, Connecticut, that was Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday, yeah. Yep. Um, and and then set up on them when they yeah. showed up. Yeah. No, and, and there's virtually nothing you can do for, for someone who truly wants to ambush you. Yeah, I mean, the, the cops are helpless. They walk up thinking, okay, it's a domestic violence. You know, you use invisible deployment, which is you use every, every means possible to hide yourself, conceal yourself while you're, you know, walking up to the residence or whatever it is, business, whatever, you know, you use trees, cars, whatever, you park away from the scene, two houses down, whatever. But ultimately you still have to get there. But you still have right. to get there. Yep. And these okay. rotten SOBs are sitting there watching out the effing window, mm -hmm. waiting for you to walk up and then they just kill you yep. in, in a, what is it called when they just... Um, Indiscriminately? No, 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 no. When when they when it's a hit and they just walk behind you and go. Oh, like behind. execution style. Execution style. Yeah, assassination. Yeah. 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 assassination. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And and well, I mean, and, and now God. With, now with all the ring cameras, not advertising for ring, but all the. Yeah. I mean, you got camera surveillance out there everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Where you can be sitting in the backyard, watch my front door. Mm hmm Yeah. All right. So I'm, I I I hold on a minute, and I hate to interrupt your show. No. But I'm going to put on my goddamn pissed off hat. Okay. 300%. What in the hell is wrong with America? You know what's wrong with America? 300%. I'll, I'll, I'll answer it, LT. Over the last couple of years, we've villain, villainized and demonized law enforcement. ACAB, all cops are bastards. Yeah. The politicians saying all cops are shitheads and, but again, and a piece of what work. is wrong with society, man? When I grew up, okay, yeah, my dad was a cop, but he wasn't a cop my whole life. When I was younger, he worked on freaking at Sherwood Medical out in the land. You know, he was a doctor. No, oh. no, he made freaking plastic parts. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, when the cops drove by my neighborhood, you waved. Yeah. They were your buddies. They were your friends. They were whatever. You know, and, and I don't want to hear no bullshit about, oh, well, the cops are different now. Yeah, they're different because they have to goddamn be different. Right. Uh, to survive out here, they yeah, got to be freaking different. But, you know, tagging on to that. And and no, no, no. Oh, my God, no, no, no. Jumping on your rant, and I know we've bitched and moaned enough about oh. defund the police. And now you have a lot of, you know, it's political season. You know, so they're talking about, oh, we're going to send this money to this, you know, we're going to, you know, send a million dollars to hire new cops and all that stuff. It's gotten to the point where it's not about the money. It's not. It's about the fact that there's no respect for law enforcement. And nobody wants to do the job anymore. Why would you want to do the job? I just went to a retirement party. Oh, by the way, Ryan Snyder. Congrats. Congrats. Give, congrats you survived brother. the badge. Yay. He's one of our brothers. He was out here with us for 20 plus years. And you know what? God bless you, buddy. Salute. Salute to you. I grabbed the wrong beer because I'm an idiot. Yeah, we know. That. <laughs> but but I, there's no I, reason. I was at the retirement party. I talked to several law enforcement officers. And they were from various agencies. I talked to several law enforcement officers that were there at this party. I said, how's it going, man? And they go, it freaking sucks, dude. It sucks. And these are cops that have been cops for five to 20 years. And they're like, it absolutely freaking sucks. You know, we can't do our job because they've got a thumb on our head. Every time we turn around, they're, they're telling us we did something wrong, did something wrong, did something wrong. And you go out there and half the citizens, they don't even want to even talk to you or even acknowledge that you're a human being. Why would you want to do this job? Nobody wants to do that job anymore. The only reason they stay is because they're hoping to get a goddamn retirement out of it. Yeah, hey, I, 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 no, 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 don't apologize. <laughs> You're absolutely right. This is what we, this is what this is shit that needs to be said. It does. Right. It really does. Um, I'm glad I got out before I started hating it. Yeah, well, and and yeah. I'm, I'm gonna throw this in now. Please do because this is one of the things where 
at least are there are some people who are out there with respect for for law enforcement. There are absolutely and, and there are. And I, I want to and thank you. I, I want to give a absolutely. shout out to and everything I've seen with him. He doesn't use his last name because he's a fourteen year old kid. Right now he's fourteen. He's been doing this for what? Oh, three I years. Know, I know where you're three going. Three years. Three years. Running for heroes. Kid named Zachariah lives in Winter Springs, Florida. Uh, Florida. Right. And and it's not just law enforcement. He does it for fire firefighters. I believe he does it for the military too. When they know about when it. When they when they get informed yeah. about it, you know, this kid runs a mile every time. Yeah, he goes to the school on the track. Law enforcement and fire fire service um, go to the scene, and they follow him around the track. And a lot of them get out there in uniform and run with him, run the mile in freaking uniform around the track of the school, and they follow him around with blue lights and sirens going the entire mile. So for every officer who's been for every officer that's down, he runs a mile. Yeah, you know, and you know, he he runs with either a thin blue line flag. He'll run with a thin red line flag. Yeah. Then green line flag, you know, it's military. But, yep. But he's also now they've got people all across the country who are running miles for people in their jurisdictions. You know, sometimes that's all it takes is one person to start. And a for train. all of them and Zachariah. Absolutely. Salute. Salute. Thank Salute. you for the support for our men and women in blue, brown, black, whatever. And, and they are opening. They're, they're actually opening. Uh, a memorial, I think it's in Winter Springs or Oviedo, right in that general area, um, where it's got it's got Canine Memorial. It's got oh, you know, God so, bless. That's awesome. Um, they got a Blue Tie Gala coming up. Um, so, okay, if you're interested, here's here's a. Th- he's 14 now, so he was like 11 when he started this. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he understands what it means, and right. you know, but. He's running too many miles. I want to. He. I want him to be as fat as we are. <laughs> where he doesn't he, have to run any miles. Where he doesn't all. have to run a mile <laughs> ever. <laughs> Last I heard, he was up to over two hundred miles. He had ran yeah. not at once, obviously. Right. right. Yeah. But over two hundred miles, he had ran for officers that had fallen. So God bless that young man and his family. Because I met him. I met him and his family. Right. And because I went out to several of them, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Right. And they are just. Oh, my God. Top-notch people, yeah. man. They're amazing. Amazing people. So continue, please. So, uh, well, to carry on to your rant, um, until there is a change in attitude. And and I said I mentioned this a couple of episodes ago. My dad was a Marine in Vietnam and Korea. And when our soldiers came back, they were spit upon. They were demonized. They were treated like shit. Yep. And then things changed and I really hope and and I try to be the eternal optimist and I really hope that that will happen with law enforcement because right now right now it's not if you you yeah. see all these videos no, I agree. of of these people who give zero yeah. respect to law enforcement and you know what you have to I'm not saying you automatic, but you know, just common decency right. to your fellow human. And unfortunately, I'm all over you know social media, and I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and I watch a lot of you know videos on other platforms and this and that, you know, where it shows a cop being you know told to f off, and 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 the guy got away with it because there was no legal standing, whatever. And then you see all the comments. Yeah, f all them cops, screw right. them cops. You know, you ain't got to do shit. Them cops say and this right. and that and the other. And then you see other ones, you know, the other guys are commenting or gals are commenting. They're like, if he would have just did what the officer asked him Mm -hmm. to do, plain and simple, if he just did it, none of the above would have happened. I'm not talking about the one in a million where the cop just opened fire for no reason. And they've, you know, they deserve deserve to go to freaking prison for the rest of their life or whatever. But keep in mind, we also just had Hurricane Ian come through, right? And everyone who was trapped in their homes, right? You know, flooded out, all that stuff. You know what? Oh, who those, was there to help them? Those first responders, yeah. those cops sure and firemen. Yeah, yeah. Sure yeah. they were there for them. So, um, to to wrap this up, I just I really hope that we have a a total mind because right now the these elites, these politicians, it it's it. 
Two years ago, that was the thing to say. Oh, cops are shitheads and they're worse. Now that they're about to lose office, they're like, oh, no, we love you the cops. You notice how Biden changed his whole tune? Right. Oh, yeah. no, it's support the police. Yeah, it's all politics. Bullshit. You know? And, the and thing watch is- our show on defund the police because we, we cover that in great detail. It, 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 it's, it, it starts from the top down and from the bottom up. Parents need it to say, sure listen, does. don't be a little shithead. Yep. You know, do what I you're agree. told. I agree. And you yep. and and you and you won't and there won't be issues. You know. I agree. I agree. So and I'd like go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go no, ahead. no. Go ahead. I'd like to thank our sponsors that make this show possible and make all of our equipment possible. Thank you for all that you have given this show. It's allowed us to get these new mic stands, a new computer, and several other things that we really need to do this show. We really appreciate it very much. And those sponsors are Kristen and Tom Clem Realtors. If you guys are ready to buy or sell a house in the Central Florida area, you dang sure want to call these folks. All their information down below, their phone numbers, email address, uh, website, everything else, please contact them. If you have that piece of property that you were looking to sell and just get rid of, you know, it was handed down generation to generation, and you're like, I don't want it anymore, I want to sell it, or anything like that, any property that you want to sell, Contact Clem and Company Property Investments. These guys will take care of you. Trust me. Um, The company I work for, we have done several, um, the flips for Tom. And not only is he a veteran Marine, but he's also a full-time law enforcement officer, sergeant on the night shift in a local agency. So he's out there giving it his all and doing this on the side. So this guy works his ever-loving butt off. So we appreciate you, Tom. Thank you. And last but very not least, is a rack above portable overhead garage storage. Steve and his team will come out to your house, they will measure up your garage, and they will put a rack that will literally hold a ton of your crap. And and they'll customize it to your garage. Absolutely, it goes all the way out to, I think it's 25 feet or something like that, but it's a rack that sits above in your garage, and you can put all of your totes, all of your Christmas decorations, everything else, Halloween decorations up above. Frosty. And you can, Frosty, yep. <laughs> and you can park a car literally if it wasn't under, stolen. You can park a car underneath this thing and it gets everything up above and off the floor so you have all of your garage space available. Please look at the link below. He's got some pictures in there that show um, jobs that he has done and he's turned garages that were an absolute nightmare like mine <laughs> into a dreamland. I'm telling you right now. So contact Steve with the rack above. We appreciate it. All right, guys, that's all I got. What do you got? Uh, I'm going to be optimistic and say that this isn't going to last forever. Um, I believe in... I pray to God. I believe in the pendulum swing. You know, things go really, really shitty, and then they come back. Um, that's, is, that's, my, that's, that's my theory. John? My only problem is I think we've swung way too far. It's going to take a long, long time to get people interested in becoming cops again i agree how do we bring them back lt how do we bring them back well we bring them back on both sides we have to get law enforcement to get involved with the community which they are trying to do and we also have to get our damn politicians to quit shitting on law enforcement every time they turn around and i'm talking about from the city mayor all the way to the freaking president of the united states it's got to stop the shitting on law enforcement has got to stop everybody loves freaking firemen why because nobody shits on the firemen yeah everybody loves the firemen you know and and I love the fire. Well, too. The, the fireman's not taking you to jail for you being a shit and true. beating your wife. And beating your wife. Absolutely. Yeah. No, well, listen. about the fire department's jurisdiction. <laughs> <laughs> you have no jurisdiction here. <laughs> well, up. no matter what happens and out there and, you know, in politician land or whatever else, <laughs> as long as you guys always know that it's surviving the badge, we still, we still got, got your six. six. Absolutely.